Okay, now that we've seen how some of the modern cryptographic techniques work, let's see how they work together to make our internet secure. Securing the internet involves making the HTTPS protocol and the secure socket level protocol secure. You're all familiar with HTTPS. This is the protocol you use when, for example, you want to give Amazon your credit card number so that you can buy a book or a movie. The secure socket level is a transport level protocol that is used when the client and server want to communicate through encrypted messages. So both of these need to make, be made secure. And what does that mean? It means two things. That messages can be sent securely, meaning encrypted, and secondly, that the identity of the server can be trusted. When we think we're communicating with Amazon, we want to make sure we're communicating with Amazon and not some rogue site. All browsers and web servers come with a suite of both symmetric and asymmetric ciphers. They also use what are known as digital certificates provided by certificate authorities that enable them to confirm the identity of servers and other computers on the Internet. And we're going to see how all this works together. Let's begin with the handshake that takes place whenever you request or whenever your browser requests a secure session with a server. So this is your browser on the left running on your laptop or your desktop computer. It makes a secure request to some server using the HTTPS protocol. This is the server. The first thing the server does is it responds to the client by sending an X509 certificate, that's a standard certificate, containing its public key. The client takes this certificate and uses one of its, uses one of its uh, digital certificates uh, that it has built into it to authenticate that the server really is who it says it is, that the server is Amazon. It also uses the certificate authorities information to confirm that the public key that was sent does belong to Amazon. So in other words, it can be assured that when it sends an encrypted message now back to the server that it's sending it to Amazon and that only Amazon can read the, the message. Given that, once the um, client authenticates the server's identity and public key, it uses the public key to encrypt a randomly generated symmetric key. The client generates this internally, encrypts it in the server's public key, and sends it back to the server. The server, of course, then uses its private key to decrypt the symmetric key. And now at this point, both the client and server are sharing a symmetric key. And from then on, they can communicate in encrypted messages using that shared symmetric key. All the rest of the traffic between them during this session is done encrypted using that symmetric key. Now, why do they use both public key and symmetric keys in this handshake? Well, the reason is that they use the public key for exchanging the symmetric key, but they use the symmetric key for the actual encryption of the data that they're sending back and forth. And the reason for this is simply that symmetric key cryptography is much more efficient than uh, public key uh, cryptography. So this saves time in terms of the traffic that goes on back and forth between the client and the server. Now, what role do the certificate authorities play? Well, first of all, a certificate authority is an entity like a corporation or a foundation that issues digital certificates. These certify the ownership of the public keys. So these certificate authorities need to do whatever it takes including maybe visiting the mem visiting the uh, organizations that say that may that create these public keys to determine that the public key really is uh, what it says it is the public key of Google or the public key of Amazon and the fact that they are trusted third parties these authorities is what enables the browsers and the servers to trust them they don't have any stake in the game other than uh, authenticating that these public keys really do belong to who they say they belong to. So uh, commercial certificate authorities charge money to uh, organizations that create browsers and so forth 
and they will automatically provide a set of these certificates that are built into the browsers. For example, Mozilla maintains a list of at least 57 different trusted certificate authority uh, and uh, corresponding certificates built right into its software. You can try this yourself. For example, go to Chrome. If you're using the Chrome browser, you can go to Chrome Preferences, Advanced Settings, HTTPS slash SSL, and choose the Manage Certificates button, and you'll see a list of all the certificates that uh, the Chrome browser has. Similarly, you can do the same thing with Firefox. So I'm going to pause here and let you play around with that a little bit. Click on some of the certificates to see some of the information that they provide to the browser. And you'll see, for example, mentioned that they are using RSA in various forms in the digital certificate. Okay, let's summarize some of the key points that we've been discussing. Internet security, which means, among other things, the HTTPS and the SSL protocols, is supported by both symmetric and public key cryptography. As you've seen now, some of the details about these algorithms, it's important that you recognize that they are based on solid mathematical foundations, and it's the intractability of solving certain problems like the prime factorization problem and the discrete logarithm problem that protects the security of these cryptographic algorithms. Secondly, all of these ciphers that we've been discussing, all of the modern cryptographic techniques, Diffie-Hellman, RSA, but also, the, but also the secure socket layer protocol, the HTTPS protocol, all of these are based on open standards that have been developed by committees of expert mathematicians, cryptographers, computer scientists that are openly discussed over a period of many months and then finally adopted as standards. They are maintained by standards organizations whose job is to maintain the standards and publish them and oversee their implementations. By the way, the current symmetric standard used in some of the examples that we saw of that handshake between clients and servers is known as the advanced encryption standard, and this is a link to it if you want to find out some of the details about how it works. It uses both substitution and transposition algorithms to create a secure symmetric cipher. And finally, certificate authorities are bodies that issue digital certificates that are used to validate the identity and authenticate the identity of servers on the internet so that when you use your browser to give your credit card information to Amazon, you can rest assured that you are actually talking to the Amazon server.